Hello everybody and welcome back to Bjorn Ironside in this sort of tutorial uh, beginner let's play for Sweden. Um, our vassals have taken or inherited little bits of land in Wessex, so we have a nice little base of operations over there. Um, we are thinking about attacking these guys to make a more contiguous block towards this guy here. And then from that we would be able to potentially integrate and vassalize. In fact, actually, what would, would these these guys are actually close to being able to accept. But they're at war, see? So we could actually integrate, we could vassalize so many of these different countries here, but they're all at war. These guys are a little too far away and they're at war. So we need to, we really need to keep an eye on when these wars end and, and such. This guy's at war, this guy's at war. Who are you, like, who are you guys even at war with? They're at war with these guys, huh? They're at war with them and it's just, it's chaos over here. You know what I mean? They're at war. Everybody's at war. It's a world at war over here. So we're basically just kind of playing through the life of Bjorn at this point, but I'm actually very kind of excited for the future of this playthrough and the fact that we're a, we're a, or we're a diplomat, right? We're very diplomatic, and that makes it easier for us to do these diplomatic integrations. That's actually giving me a new perspective on things, the fact that uh, we're able to do that so well. We have a decent amount of little a bit of money here. Now, how many actual uh, duchies do we control right now? Jarldoms, I mean. Yeah, we have a Jarldom up here. Yeah. I think we're going to give that one away. Well, I don't know. That one's actually in Sweden. This one's not even in Sweden. Let's grab this. We can also afford this one, too. We have too many held duchies. Let's go find someone over here. He's got two prowess. He's got ten prowess. He's a baby. Guy's got 19 prowess. You know what? Hello. There you go. You got any. There we go. You're going to get this title. Over here, if we click on these, this guy's got seven prowess. So I just don't, I want to make sure that our knights are still available, right? I don't want to give away our knights. This guy is in jail. Who's your jailer, dude? I'm a little bit concerned by the fact he's in jail. This guy is hideous he doesn't look hideous he is literally hideous though so his ability to have kids is even minimized by that this guy's possessed yeah i don't know man i don't know i don't think we have too many good options here but let's let's give this one away so have fun dude and uh, and there we go. Hopefully these wars are going to end soon. They don't look like they're going to end anytime soon, but that would be the hope. That would be the hope. Who is this exactly? Because it seems like everybody in the world is attacking these guys. Oh, lots of people are attacking Norvik. Whoa. Oh, no, these guys are attacking these guys. Oh, okay, interesting. Which is interesting because it looks like these guys are actually, these are the aggressors, right? Whoa. They're going in for a subjugation? If these guys win, if these guys win the war, they'll subjugate all of this nation and integrate it into, um, into Sweden. That would be crazy. That would be absolutely crazy because then we'd get all that connection. That would end all these wars. So when this war ends, we might take this land and then these guys, yeah, exactly. So let's focus actually on potentially moving our rally points here. Let's get rid of these, this rally point. Let's move this one over to Wessex. So we move this rally point here. Let's raise up um, 4,000 troops and let's just go on and tear through Wessex. Oh, there's money all through here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This will be good. Now, the question that I'm kind of wondering here is, do we want more men-at-arms? How much do we pay on our men-at-arms? Two prestige when they're unraised, maybe a little bit more if they're raised. Raised, man, it's pretty, man, it is kind of expensive. We have a lot of prestige now, but we don't know if our son's going to have a lot of prestige. These ones are a lot cheaper. These little skirmishers are a bunch cheaper. Over in Wessex, though, it is mostly... Um, Yeah, that's tricky. 
it's mostly planes. The, the light horsemen would be really good out here. These guys are super expensive, but we have the prestige for it. You know, what the heck? Eh, we'll wait. We'll wait till our son takes over, because I, I really think that could be a little bit touchy. Let's raise everybody here. Let's go up to about 4,000. Then we're going to pause as soon as this gets to about 4,000. Our brother Hafton is dead. So those wars should be... Um... Okay, that's good. We're going to grab these troops. We're going to control move them to break the... Um... To break the gathering, right? So they're no longer gathering anymore. Is, do we have any reavers that can raid more quickly? This guy is a reaver. He's very... It would cost us uh, 35 gold to recruit him right now. We do not have the gold. But he would be much quicker at raiding. This guy actually has a movement speed uh, bonus, which is kind of interesting. So that could kind of help us a little bit too. This guy's our prisoner, huh? He's a pretty de decent marshal, actually. I guess we'll just keep the 27 guy. He's a decent knight, but we'll just, yeah, we'll just, it'll be fine. We'll keep the better marshal to scare Alfred. Alfred's an incredible leader. He's an incredible general. And he's just, I mean, he's just got all the skills. It's just, it's just nuts. Oh, we can, we need to make ourselves raiders. So we have to come down here and hit the start raiding button. Excellent work. Okay, so we are sick. We are sick right now. That is not good. We could die at any moment. We're old and we're sick. Holy cow, this could be the end, guys, for Bjorn. This could be the end for Bjorn. Ooh, I might gain a diplomatic lifestyle perk. That would be amazing. Let's do it. A blooming friendship. Okay. Although I don't want to pay the gold because we don't have the gold right now to send uh, to bring him here. Whoops. They became rivals instead. That's fine. They were... We sent them to become friends, they became rivals. That's fine, our son can have a rival or two. Is our son actually of age yet? He's still 13 years old. I'd like to be able to live three more years for him to become our... Oh, we lost the trait ill. Nice, our, our physician did an incredible job. So that guy is keeping us alive. That guy is keeping us alive. You're a lowborn. You're a lowborn. You're... Uh, you're someone without a family. So we're basically just imprisoning anyone that we can, right? I don't necessarily love the fact that these imprisonments are like entire events or whatever. And you have to wait for each one to resolve to do the next one. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that. We don't need a concubine. We don't need more kids right now. We have kids coming out of our ears. Imprison those people basically just to have them pay a fee, right? And then we can just ransom them. So we do want to make sure we don't engage these peasants. So that's not our job to clear those peasants, but it does look like they're neutral. Oh, there's wait, is there no money here? No, there's seven, 17 gold. Okay. We have a new light perk. Oh, this is great. For every friend, we gain two random skills. Holy cow, that could be amazing. Let's go look at our character here 29, 13. We got, hey, we got some extra there. So the more friends we get, the more friends we get, the better here. Let's just start becoming friends with like all of our kids and things. Might as well. The more, every time we get a friend, we get more uh, personal traits is what's going on there. Oh, we could actually go up here to this uh, this church. Yeah, let's go that way first. Go this way, come down, cross the river. Looks like there's going to be a few troops here that we might be engaging. Um, sort of just accidentally, but on our way to Canterbury. It's going to be a little bit of a river crossing. It is what it is, I guess. 
So she's a rival. I don't I don't think we really care that much. If she wants to continue to be a rival, that's great. Looks like these guys are still at war. Still at war. Everybody's still at war. Those wars, wars are going to take a little bit to resolve. This person wants a little baby out of jail. That's fine. We'll let the baby go out of jail. Canterbury is going to be where we get the big pile of money now. Because we have a lot more troops here, right? We can hold more money. So we can get up to 400 gold. And that gold does get passed down to our heir. But the prestige does not, right? The prestige is really tied to us as a character. Same with our piety. We're actually coming up on Paragon and Virtue, which is interesting. I think we said that we wanted to attack uh, Lotharingia during this moment of weakness. And we could set ourselves up for a big war against East Francia as well. We'll let people have hooks on us. That's fine. We're basically just... I'm not scared that they're going to do anything poor, uh, you know, terrible against us. I just want the, uh, the to get the friends. We're just here to get the friends. We could recruit that guy who's a, a, a reaver. Which gives us 50% faster. Nope. Sorry, dude. You got you got to build up your... You got to keep building up your, your wealth a little bit here. Coming up on the capital. I don't think Wessex can challenge us at all. They're in a war of their own, but... Which is actually against uh, who? Lower Cecilia? Silesia? Silesia? I don't think we need to pay to make them friends. I think they're just going to be friends in a few days. Yeah, honestly, Wessex doesn't have like an insane amount of money compared to like if we if we if we could go over to France. Actually, we could. So these people are becoming closer to becoming our friends, but they're not becoming our friends. What's the dealio here? What's the dealio here? The next one too, the next perk, I think we get one for every child we have. Each living child gives you one random skill point. So right now we have, I don't know, seven. So we'll get seven skill points when we get that, when we get that perk, which is pretty good. And then the final thing in that tree, the patriarch gives us um, stress loss fertility. You know, I don't even know if we care about that that much. We might actually just immediately grab sound foundations and then move over to medicine focus and start working on like scholarly things or something like that. I mean, heck, if we live for a long time, then that could still be, it could, it could all still be pretty good. We've actually ran out of supply. Oh, interesting. People are dying. Our, our raid group is too big. We're taking 5% attrition every tick here. Holy cow, let's go, let's go, let's go. decent church too yeah too many of our too many of our guys i think i think we cut down the levy count here a little bit disband those thousand apparently there's just too many of them and um, hopefully we can build up supply here right yeah 20 supply per month if we can build that back up to 100, then we can go down to France. France is pretty weak, so we can deal with this, uh, with the group that we have. Nice. 50. Uh, we captured somebody while raiding. Lawfully imprisoned this person. Not particularly an important character. Um, we have a lot of wars that we could do. We could transfer a subject. 
That's fine. Some prisoners can be ransomed. I feel like we... Well, what does the allies look like here? Yeah, I think we attack Lotharingia for Zealand while we can. That's a holy site. That's going to be really good for uh, for the Norse people. Um, it's going to be it's going to make us a little bit vulnerable having direct land on. Oh, we did it! Holy cow, we did it! These guys are still in a war. These guys are now in a in a war that they weren't in a second ago. Um, these guys are in a war against us. In fact, we inher oh we actually inherited those wars. We're in a war now. So we can't raid while we're at war. Is one of the things. So let us uh, go to this rally point here that we've now put here. It's getting blocked by other things. So let's raise up the troops. Okay, we caught him. And we have died. Bjorn is dead. This guy's only 14 years old. Holy cow, that means we're not going to be able to vassalize these people like that. Our, is our son a diplomat too? Holy cow, we're down to one out of five over here on, in terms of uh, holdings. The only holding we have is our capital here. Holy cow. So our economy and presti our prestige is going to be massively in the hole. It's not good. It's not good. Is this guy still assigned? No, he's not. Let's make sure he's our court physician. We are not... Uh, we're not married to anybody yet. We nominate a successor... We have no kids, so really, I don't know. It's kind of up in the air who we'd actually like. Half-brother. This guy's possessed. This guy's bossy, at least. I mean, presumably, are we still getting a good education? Yeah, we're, getting, we're still being educated by a genius. Our, our stats are not great, but we're still a child, so our stats are still actively being developed. Um, that was a bad time to die. We needed like a few more years. We needed a few more years. Man. We almost could have got like these guys grabbed up, scooped up diplomatically. That would have been insane. This is going to be just a zilch chance here. I maybe we can get like a plus 30 based on opinion. But he's not our de jure. We don't have that other perk to cancel out that, that de jure penalty. So. Yep, no one's going to accept vassalization anymore. It's kind of a bummer. So it's going to be conquest. It's going to be war. Um, but if we can unify all this, then we will have the Norse... Uh, we will have the Norse culture unified, and that's going to be uh, really good for us, essentially. So, actually, some Norse over here. Do we own that? No, we don't. Dang. So, basically, uh, you know, when you die, you're going to get a lot of these pop ups up here. It says we need to um, select someone to be um, the person that's going to take over the country when we die. Let's just make sure it's someone that is of our dynasty. At first, we can't really trust the, the education that they're getting because they're a nephew. We're not in charge of them in any way. Of course, we didn't marry off a lot of our, our random sisters. And so let's just give it to our brother here. The truth is we're not gonna get a, we're not gonna be able to sway anybody to vote with us regardless. So that won't happen. We don't have the tread um, either. Uh, we're just being a being a child, we're actually kind of in trouble a little bit. We can make the Kingdom of Denmark, though. Kind of interesting. And we can also make the Duchy of... We can make the Duchy over here. 
It's going to cost us quite a bit more because we don't have that same perk. However, we do have a good amount of money. And if we did something like this, it would give us um, prestige, which would be good. Also, presumably, our character only had one Jarldom. So now we have two Jarldoms, which we're allowed to hold on to two of those. That'll give us some more prestige, which, which is good. We're fourth in line, apparently, to get this. That's pretty sad and pathetic if you think about it. We can negotiate some alliances with, like, our brothers and stuff, but, you know, I guess there's no reason not to do that. If it helps us maintain a, a positive relationship. We can make the Kingdom of Denmark. The question is, how close would we be to the Kingdom of the Scandinavian Empire if we were to actually get Norway, Denmark, and Sweden? We would not be there, right? We'd be missing Estonia. We'd be missing Vinland. We'd, uh, Finland. We'd be missing um, Sami uh, or Lapland, Kingdom of Lapland, and we'd be missing uh, part of Iceland there. So I'm not going to worry about making those other kingdom titles yet because essentially if you make too many titles, if you make a bunch of titles, essentially it, it can be a problem. But we have way less knights right now. Holy cow, that's not good. A lot of our people don't like us. So because we're just a child, we can't go in, we can't sway anybody as a child. So we're kind of stuck uh, with people not liking us. Controlling the capital should be good. Let's have you focusing on training commanders. You're disrupting schemes. Our spy master doesn't hate us that much. If we were to try to give a... Actually, that's a cheap gift. You know what? I will do that to make the spy master happy. Some of these people really don't like us, but some of them are... Our subjects don't like us because we're a child. We're a weak, we're a child, we've barely taken over the throne. We don't have any heirs or anything like that. It's all kinds of bad stuff. We're not betrothed. You know what the heck, let's see who can we can marry. Inheritable traits. Give me someone with like a genius. Give me a genius or Herculean or something. Here's a young genius right here. It's not a very powerful alliance, but this is someone that likely... Uh, will be a good um, wife once she um, once she comes of age. We're 14. That's not too much. Heck, 14 year difference. That's not that big of a deal. And we don't lose any um, prestige for doing that alliance. Let's do it. Let's make that betrothal. So the war here is for... Actually, the war is for this. We're going to siege this down. We're not the head of faith. We're not the head of faith. Maybe because we're a child. We don't have a very particularly amazing learning skill either. Yeah, hmm. we're not paying for our troops very well because we're not making as much uh, prestige. This guy is still working on developing our capital. That, I think, is still good. This guy here is just giving us piety, which I don't know if that helps us too much. Where did that really, really good marshal go? Let's get this guy on here, even if he doesn't like us. Yeah, because we had that really amazing marshal up here somewhere or something. Maybe he's down here. I can't remember where he was. That's right. Oh, that's right. Kids cannot hold feasts. You're a child. You can't hold a feast. I don't. I don't like that. But we can raise a rune stone to our father, and that will make everybody like us more. We could check out and see if there's any knights sitting in our court. Not really. Oh, my poor brother has gained the smallpox. Nice. So if our siblings can, can die off, that could be a good thing in terms of us potentially inheriting back some of the lands that we've lost. Ideally, it'd be nice to take these provinces over, but I guess if we just take new provinces, it's kind of all the same. So this guy is actually the, uh, the heir here. He's our nephew. He is of our dynasty. Uh, he's got a decent stat. He's got a good prowess. I mean, if, if we die, then he's the one that's going to essentially take over. 
We have some decent commanders, but it looks like they're already stuck uh, um, commanding their own armies. This guy's got engineer, unyielding defender, some decent stuff there. So let's just make sure we're, we're sort of winning the war that we're fighting here. In order to win that war, one of our brothers, it looks like, just passed away. Wait, no. Wait a second. No, 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 no. Yeah, our, our, our amazing, like, learned person died. It's a bummer. Let's get this guy in there. He's, he's a 19. That's not terrible. We could also just uh, make him our court physician in case something happens. That'll make him a little bit happier, too, which is good to make sure that the clergymen uh, like us. That scared this guy off of this province. What we really need to do is we need to come and siege this out. It costs us six gold to do this. What the heck? Let's let's go. Let's take their capital. Take this. The war should be over. We're going to be fighting this war for a few years, right? It's going to take a little bit of time in order for this to uh, to resolve. Heirs are swip, switching back and forth again. No one's going to respect us or, or align with us until we've ruled for a long time, and we need to have our own children, and then basically push um, push people to vote for our children. So it kind of makes sense that everybody's kind of upset with us at the moment. We're still building this this building, and then we'll want to continue to build buildings. We're going to need to get more holdings, right? We have room for five holdings because our stewardship's a lot higher than our father's, which is nice. Wait a second. I just realized we already have a... That's right. That's right. We're supposed to be getting a education... We haven't gotten our education yet. So we can't even be working on our perks yet because we're doing this. Our intrigue is, is average. I mean, I, our learning is not a good starting point, but man, that would have been nice if we had done that. I don't know. Fingers crossed that we can, we can our character can turn into... I mean, I, I don't know. The fact that we're going into intrigue might mean we might be able to sort of reclaim... A number of these these pieces of, of these titles and stuff that we've lost to our siblings through sneaky ways. So that might be something that we can do. Ideally, we would take Zealand. In our lifetime, we would take Zealand and we would unify uh, Norway and Denmark. That would be uh, sort of our objective for this character's life. How much of this is actually of Norse culture here? There's only like one piece here. Of, of Norse culture. That one little bit there. Building and marriage. I'm, I'm not really sure if we care too much about what's going on there. These guys don't have enough troops to siege that down. We're about to siege down their capital. We could capture the king and just end this. There's really no way that they can win this war, but most of their war score is coming from holding the war goal, uh, which is down here. So we're going to have to go down there and take it 100% because we it looks like we had... Oh, just because we sieged their capital. 100%. Cool. So that war is over. Great. Um, let us disband our troops and think about uh, what we might want to do. Now, can we declare war while we're a child? I actually don't know. It looks like we can. But we are not a high enough prestige in order to uh, declare for the entire duchies, right? We can only do counties. However, two counties, two counties, one county. This guy's quite a bit beefier in terms of the amount of pieces of land that he has. There's four there, yeah. So I mean, ideally, like if we go to duchies, yeah, that's an entire duchy. So to take that all at once would be kind of nice. To take these all at once would be would be nice. But I think we're just, honestly, what we could do is we could just attack this here, grab that one piece of land. Taking something, taking that back would be nice too. Both the Ringi is even weaker. This would be a huge, bold play. But taking Zealand, yeah, I don't know if we're strong enough right now to take Zealand. What I'm going to do is a little bit of a trick here. I'm going to go up to a rally point. I'm going to raise all, and then I'm just going to delete them. And that might reset our... Yeah, that resets our levies. 
So now we know what our true levy count is. When you die and your heir takes over, your levies are bound to go down because your subjects aren't going to be as loyal. They're not going to contribute as much of an army to your cause because they don't respect, have faith in our ruler because he's new and because in this case, he's a child. Um, however, however, um, if you if you raise your troops and then disband them, you'll get a better, you'll get an accurate count of what the actual levies are. This is a little concerning, right? This is a little concerning. This guy owns a ridiculous amount of land. But when he dies, it looks like it's going to go boom. It looks like it's going to go boom uh, because he has three different Jarldoms and it, it and I think he can only have like one. Or maybe he can have more than one. I, I, I Maybe because he doesn't have a kingdom tally, he can have as many as he wants. I, I can't remember how that works, but presumably he's got a bunch of sons and it's going to get split amongst all those sons. So I think for the most part, though, this has been a relatively successful playthrough. If Bjorn had lived for a couple more years, man, and if these are like random wars, there, there was a situation where we could have actually vassalized all of this, peacefully vassalized. And we weren't keeping a close eye on this. When that war ended, we should have gone in there. We could have like peacefully vassalized like half of Scandinavia. It would have been crazy. It would have been absolutely crazy. Um, but we could also war for all of this too. And that would be, I think our goal would be just to absorb the, the Norse uh, culture land and, and then sort of start growing outwards towards uh, forming the empire the empire of Scandinavia. So it's a long-term goal. Thanks everybody for watching. I think what we're going to do is we're going to start a new playthrough. And if you guys have questions, please fire away. We're probably going to start a new playthrough as a new character. And we'll probably try to pick someone in Christendom, like a little vassal or a little counter or something and try to work that up. So here we did a Viking pagan playthrough, but I think we will continue to try to make beginner tutorial for, you know, tutorials for complete beginners, but take another stab at it and try to do better in the next one. So thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.